Hello everybody, and welcome to more Zach EV. Regular viewers will know that I always start the videos with the words a channel dedicated to all things electric vehicles, electric vehicle charging and all related technologies. I've had a lot of electric vehicle videos and a lot of electric vehicle charging videos. But today we're going to do a video that's a little bit different and falls into the latter category. And that is a video on Elon Musk's Starlink. We've signed up for the Starlink internet service. We applied for it way back last year when we bought our Tesla. And we finally had an email saying we're eligible for the service. So you have to pay some money up front and hopefully within the next six months we'll get the hardware and start our internet service. Now I know there's probably a whole bunch of you watching this video going, what is Starlink? Or Starlink. Kill. Or it's very expensive. So hopefully this video will answer any of those questions and show you a little bit about how we registered our interest, how we signed up, the sign up process and what the costs are involved. So let's act like a bin lorry on a dead end road, back up to the start and tell you about what Starlink is. Remember to like and subscribe on the video and if you hit the bell icon you'll get notifications of our future videos. So to answer what Starlink is, we've got to have a quick history lesson. So the internet is based on a system that was set up in the Victorian times using telegrams. So telegrams were fed all around the world using cables which were laid along the ocean floors. Obviously that's been upgraded over time to a fibre optic network, but it still uses the same system of cables basically um, in a web around the world. You can see maps of it online. Starlink is a little bit different because it uses a satellite system. So Starlink is a branch of SpaceX. Uh, so that's Elon Musk's company. Elon Musk being the founder of Tesla Motors and Starlink aims to be an internet provider using satellites. So in May 2019 Starlink launched its first satellites. As of February 2021 they've got well over a thousand satellites in orbit and more planned. The company eventually wants to have around 42,000 in orbit which will increase the uh, speed and the reliability of the connection. And if you think about from May 2019 to 2021 they've got a thousand in orbit and the rate at which SpaceX is developing their um, technologies, I can believe it. The satellite internet providers do exist but they're on a far distance from Earth in what we call a geostationary orbit. So they're always above the same part of the planet um, and that allows them to reduce their costs because they can use that same satellite for beaming internet connections. But the distance and the low number of satellites mean these connections aren't great for remote and rural communities. With Starlink this is a whole group of satellites that work with each other and talk to each other and your dish communicates to those satellites directly for your internet connection um, and it chops and changes as different satellites come over. The dish itself actually tracks the satellites and moves to the next available satellite. Now it's still in its beta testing stage as they call it. So. Um, the coverage isn't as good as it will be but it's improving all the time and uh, the idea is that there's going to be a worldwide system for providing internet to anyone, anywhere. One of the nice sort of bonuses of this system is that also it means that there is a free internet in the fact that people can link up to these this satellite internet system without having to go through their government's um, restrictions if you like. Now, we have actually got experience working and living in countries where the internet connection is um, censored and monitored and I do think it has a detrimental effect on society in general. So I think a free internet is a good thing whether you do or not. That, that's 
open to your personal opinions and open to debate. It's kind of an inevitability. So, being in England, we've got a free internet, so why would you invest in this technology? Where we live is very remote, very rural. Uh, we were told by telecoms companies over and over again that we would get a good broadband signal. So, signed up with those telecoms companies, uh, and after a couple of months of messing around, we could never get more than about a quarter of a meg along our phone lines. Awful, absolutely awful. There's no fiber around, so we can't get fiber broadband, and the telephone lines are just terrible. I don't know why telecoms companies would always claim that we would get a, a faster internet speed by going with them, but we never did. Um, and it varies between quarter and half a meg, but we never got better than that. Yeah, windy days, uh, and sort of now and again, we would, it would plummet to nothing. So we've never had a good broadband signal here. Then uh, we tried out a couple of different mobile phone providers. So we had a 4G package with E, which worked for about a year, and slowly tapered off in performance. Contacted EE, we didn't really get much support. They were saying they were doing as best as they can. I don't, they could, we could never got to the bottom of why the performance dropped off in terms of speed. So um, we ended up swapping to Vodafone. Now Vodafone, to be fair, have always provided us with a good service. We have a, a Gigacube, which is an unlimited internet package, um, and we use that as our main router. Uh, we do watch and stream movies, Netflix, Amazon. We don't watch a lot of TV as such, so nearly everything we watch is through streaming providers. And it does work, but it's very, very limited. I think we're on the we're on the edge of what is possible where we are. I know there are routes that you can go down in terms of providing improving internet performance, but it's all pretty limited. It's essential that we have good internet service for um, running our business, for my wife working from home, and I have the YouTube channel. Uploading videos is extremely painful. So, I know for most people, they've got a good broadband connection on their homes. If you live in the suburbs and you've got good fiber or you live in the cities, you've probably got a decent internet connection. Um, but for rural communities um, and places that are just in the middle of nowhere, out in the sticks, all around the world, this is a great option. So in the UK, the hardware is, uh, an upfront fee to purchase the hardware of £439. And then it's a rolling subscription of £89 per month. Now I know this sounds ridiculously expensive for an internet service, but bear in mind that we're already running a couple of different mobile contracts and we have a landline. Again, it seems a lot for internet, but this is a business cost to us. It's essential that we have good internet service for um, running our business and for the YouTube channel. And it's pretty much our TV service as well. So overall, although it's a large cost for us, it's a sacrifice that we knew we were making when we built a house out in the middle of nowhere. So um, it's just something we've accepted as one of those bills that we have to pay. Tried to offset that by making our house as economical to run as possible and as energy efficient as possible. Um, and we've been quite successful in doing that. Hopefully some videos coming up on that. So yeah, yeah it is expensive, but um, for us, it's worth it. And in terms of our um, unlimited internet packages, plus the phone line that we're having to run at the moment, there's not a huge difference in cost apart from the upfront fee. So we registered an interest to be notified when uh, Starlink was available in our area. So they're flowing out to different areas at different times. We had an email notification this week. So to see if Starlink are, is available in your area, you can go onto the Starlink website, starlink.com, uh, put in your location, and they'll either 
you put in your email and you'll get notified when it is available in your location to purchase or if it is already available uh, you can make the purchase immediately uh, it'll come up with the fees on the website put in your payment details and then when the hardware is available it'll be sent to you one of the important things at the moment is although you buy the hardware and it belongs to you it's geotagged to your location I think that's part of the beta testing program because they want to test um, you know where there's where they're seeing coverage gaps um, monitor the performance which is all collected in an app um, and the data sent back to Starlink so um, you can't move locations um, and I know there's a lot of people asking can I buy the hardware but I believe at the moment if I got the hardware and sold it to someone because they're desperate to try it out you uh, it will not work as far as I know I'm guessing that somewhere along the lines when when uh, you know everything is established um, and they're not collecting the data the beta testing data anymore you probably have to notify them that you want to sell the hardware and get permission to um, for the for the new users for it to start working or something like that um, but at the moment you can't sell the hardware so once we get the hardware we'll get it installed maybe show you a bit of the installation process which we'll do ourselves um, take you through you know setting it up which I've heard is very very simple and then sort of maybe do a video or some updates on the performance how we're getting on with it um, again probably not so many people in the UK um, interested in this product because coverage in the UK and Europe is really really good but I imagine there's a lot of people around the world who will be very interested in it so um, yeah let us know what you think in the comments if you like the video give us a cheeky thumbs up on that like button and if you subscribe and hit the bell icon you'll get notified about all our future videos including the update on the Starlink when we get it and thanks very much for watching